So now we're going to talk about low-dose mode uh, and a little bit on energy filtering since that's integrally sort of part of using doing cryomicroscopy. So low-dose mode um, lets you define four different areas. They're called areas. Uh, each one has independent magnification and beam settings. And they're named the same as the default names for the camera acquisition because they're in fact tied to these um, these modes. So it's the view, which you usually set up for a low mag overview, and then focus for focusing off displaced along the tilt axis. And trial also displaced, usually kept the same as the focus. And the record area, which is where you really want to get your data from and that you're trying to protect the most from the dose. Um, and to activate or go to one of these areas, simple way is just to take a picture of that corresponding uh, camera type. Um, and the other way is to drop the screen and have this area to show when screen is down selection made so that it goes to one of the areas. And that's particularly useful for adjusting the low dose in the first place. Now, there is, of course, the fifth camera parameter set preview. And this one activates record, but it does it with the binning and exposure time of the preview. So it lets you see the record area with a very low dose. Now, in addition to a fifth camera set that goes to a fourth area, we have, uh, we'll get to that in a second. I was going to show just to, just to make this more concrete. It's just the illustration that when we have a view image and we go to define the position of one of the displaced areas, you'll see the boxes representing the record area and the trial area or focus area. And a circle that's drawn around the trial area that represents the fact that if you had the beam adjusted so it was just outside the trial area, it would be that big. So. As I was about to say, there's also this thing called the search area, which has another set of independent magnification beam settings, but it's not tied to an image acquisition. So it can be used if you want to look at the screen in either a standard low mag, mag or a diffraction mode, or if you have a video rate camera that's displayed outside of serial yet. Um, and you can either enter it directly by pushing the search button or um, make it active by making it the area that's shown when the screen is down. So that's why we've got the box around all of that. OK. Uh, now, what we're doing here is we're sort of walking through everything on this dialogue because it's all very closely packed together. Um, and somewhat functions are not all obvious, but the fact is with low dose mode and with cryomicroscopy, um, all these things are here for a reason to deal with somebody's problems somewhere. And if you are aware of them, then you can deal with your problems too. So um, controlling the beam blanking is very important in low dose. And so uh, this option here, blank beam when screen is down, controls whether the beam is blank when the screen is down. So if you do have the screen down, you can toggle this on and off to see the beam, or you can just press the unblank button and then it'll be on until the next time you raise the screen and, and, and uh, still the option will stay checked to keep the beam off if you lower, if you lower it again. Now, Serial also keeps the beam blank when the screen is, is up in case it gets lowered because it can't anticipate fast enough that it needs to blank the screen uh, when the screen is lowered. And the cameras will keep the screen blanked when it's keep the beam blank when the screen is up, but then they drop that blanking immediately. So um, this readout here for blanked is always an indicator of the state of the blanking. Now blanking is different from uh, the um, beam blanker that the camera uses. So there's actually three different shutters out there in the system in the general case. Um, so this is really an independent beam blanker. Uh, and the unblank button is also important if you're going to be using software outside of Serial EM to take, that needs to access the beam, most important case for tuning the GIF or aligning the zero loss peak, 
through digital micrograph or the or the buttons in the Techni interface. Now the area properties can be set up by turning on the continuous update button here and and then adjusting properties. And here the term mag and beam is referring to the magnification, the spot size, and the beam intensity, but not to the beam shift. And it also encom encompasses any energy filter settings. Now, an exception to this is that you can use the set intensity item in the task menu to change the intensity, and it will it will affect the intense stored intensity that applies to the current area even without continuous up update being on. But otherwise, if you haven't got this on and you twiddle the magnification and the beam and so forth, all that will go away when you go to take a new picture. And a reflection of that is that the property line for the um, area in question, the current area, is grayed out. That, that would mean that it really is something that's not active, but those are just fixed properties in that case. Okay, uh, a handy set of buttons when you're setting things up uh, is that if you've just set a new magnification for your record, you can copy it over to the trial and focus areas to have those be at the same max but you'll still want to go to them and adjust the beam for them separately. Um, and here's the option that keeps focus and trial identical. Um, almost everyone probably does it this way, but there are some special cases where you might want them separate. And when this is checked, it doesn't matter what which area you're in when you adjust their properties. They're just really kept tied together and they're all the same. Now to adjust the position, displacement along the tilt axis, you select to define the position of one of the areas, trial or focus, and then you have several options. You can just plain type a position into the text box, or you can take a view image and you can click in it and, and it will set the currently defined area out at that position. Or you can actually take a trial image and either click in it or shift it to where you want it to be, and this will not shift the whole system, it will just shift the position of the uh, trial along the axis when this option is is um, activated. And this maximum area separation is the distance between this outside circle here and the record area. Whereas the position is the distance between the centers of the areas. And this just shows that if you go and select to define the position of focus, you'll see things in yellow here, except this is still the circle around the, the trial area instead, just so you're reminded that you're going to be taking pictures that big one way or another, um, and that's liable to be how big the beam is. Now, tasks work differently in low-dose mode because they generally use the view area um, instead of, of sort of going down to their own preferred magnification uh, to do things. And so that applies to the rough and fine use centricity, the reverse tilt operation, and the image shift reset operation. But both image shift reset and fine use centricity have an option to use the trial area instead, which some people want to do to really keep as much dose as possible off by avoiding the view. And um, now, walk-up uses the trial area regardless of mag, and um, that's the rationale for that is that since we're going to be in a tilt series using trial area to, tr to track as we, as we tilt down, we should be walking up with that as well. Um, but just starting discussions now with people about whether it makes sense to do walk-ups with view instead in some cases. Now, it's going to go and use view, and the assumption here is that the user, you, has set this up so that it's got low enough mag to run these tasks reliably. And low enough mag usually translates into a certain image field of view um, for, the, for, the, for the view area. And most tasks will run with a field of view of, of uh, at least five microns, and I think the rough use centricity requires eight microns.
Now, in low dose, we keep two auto-align buffers, one for record and preview type images and one for the trial images. And this is in tilt, when tilt series is active, this is enforced to be the D and E buffers, respectively. And, and so it will automatically try to align the image in A to one of these buffers, depending upon which kind of image it is. Now, what you're going to see in the, um, the video pretty soon is an illustration of this, but um, the, <clears throat> we have the ability to shift the beam around individually into different areas. And the reason for this is because various things make the beam centering differ between the areas, especially at high mag. Um, and so there's this capability called the additional beam shift to be able to set the center of the beam for a particular area. And you can also use it to miss center the beam away from the record area in the trial and focus area if you want to. Um, so to use this, you'll see the illustration in the video, but you basically you turn on the set button, you move the beam around to where it's centered in the area you're, you want to be uh, in, and you turn off the set button, and all those movements get recorded as the extra amount that's supposed to happen um, when it goes to that area. So the practice then is to get the beam centered in the record area with no shift, and you might have to use reset if somehow you've got a shift in there. <clears throat> then shift uh, to the other, then, then go to the other areas and set the shifts. Now, even with that kind of thing, you might find that, that centering isn't consistent. And you might realize that it's happening because it's the, either the beam size or the beam centering is different depending upon the last area that was visited before going to a particular area. Um, and so this is, this is due to hysteresis effects in the condenser lens. And this option called normalized beam through view will make the intensity go through the view area settings, which is going to be the sort of lowest intensity because the beam is most spread there, whenever it switches between any of the other areas. And so that makes both the position and the size reproducible uh, or more reproducible. And then if you still have offsets, then you go and set your additional beam shift to, with that uh, option activated. <clears throat> now there's some more shifting around that we can do. Um, one is to be able to offset the defocus uh, for the view images. And uh, this is handy for getting images that are at higher contrast uh, than the standard defocus that you're working at. Now, the other kind of offset is a shift if the view area is not well centered on the record. And so here is an ability to record, um, to align these images better. Let me just go and do a quick illustration of that with some kind of image somewhere. OK, let's go to low dose. which I can't do for some reason. So we'll close the navigator. Why can't I go on this? I just had a demo. Demo demons have just struck. Okay, well, back to the words. 